Hello, and welcome to a podcast for the St. Raymond Donatus Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith. This is Ann DeSantis, your host with my co-host as well, Mr. Mickey Kelly. He is the board president of the St. Raymond Donatus Foundation. Mickey, it's so wonderful to have you again on our podcast. And this is our 10 Virtues podcast for those affected by divorce and separation. So again, thank you so much for being here. Hi, and thank you for having me. It's great to be on the podcast once again. That's right. And on this one, on our 10 virtues, we are going to talk about the virtue of perseverance. You know, we all need perseverance in our lives for all of those aspects of just trying to live out the faith as best we can. But since our audience on this one is for those affected by divorce, there's a certain perseverance when you're going through a rough situation having to do with that divorce or separation, whatever that is. And maybe you're watching this and you're in the middle of something that's not so good in your family. And so I just want to hand it over to you, Mickey, for a couple of seconds here. Just tell us what's your take on this virtue of perseverance. Well, and I think the perfect illustration of how perseverance is placed in practice is I do see it quite a lot in athletes, especially when we look at some of the sports like baseball or football and there's like these teams that probably had a probably say maybe like not the best season i'd say for example we look at the phillies last year and everybody's like writing them off and they're saying things like oh they're not going to go to the playoffs and everything and they proved them wrong and same thing for the eagles years ago when they won their first super bowl uh, championship after three tries you know things of that nature i think what they have to understand is that you have a mentality that, you know, you're not going to give up, so to speak. And I think that's the same thing as Christians. Like we had to have that same mentality that, you know what? I know things are, I know the odds are stacked against me, but I'm going to just going to keep going, keep pushing forward. Even the Pope knew full well that it's always forward. There's never back. Pope Francis once said that perseverance is a reflection in the world of God's love, because God's love is faithful. It never changes. I think for us in our spiritual journey, we must acknowledge the fact that, perse that persevering in faith can help us get through whatever adversity stand in our way. That's right, because there's a lot of adversities that stand in all of our way, whether you're going through something challenging or not in your life. And I always turn to our audience and say, those who are in some way wounded, right? Wounded by divorce and separation, that there's a certain perseverance when you're going through certain things in your family. Maybe funds are low. Maybe you have some court, court dates coming up. Maybe your kids are going through really rough times and you don't know how to handle that. So there's a certain perseverance where we need to ha hang on to our faith. And I do want to turn to one of the catechism references, um, which I will hear in just a second, and just mention to all of you that in the catechism, there are wonderful references on the necessity of faith. And I'm reading number 161 in the catechism, where it says that believing in Jesus Christ and in the one who sent him for our salvation is necessary for obtaining salvation, since without faith, it is impossible to please God and to attain the fellowship of his sons. Therefore, without faith, no one has ever attained justification, nor will anyone obtain eternal life, but he who endures to the end. Now, notice at the end, it says to enduring to the end. And that's part of the virtue of perseverance. And the catechism goes on to say in number 162, there is a section called perseverance and faith, where it says that faith in an entirely is an entirely free gift from God made man, uh, we can, we can, uh, we can lose the priceless gift as St. Paul indicated to St. Tim Timothy, the wages, uh, the, excuse me, wage the good warfare, building faith and a good conscience by rejecting conscience. Certain persons have made ship a shipwreck of their faith to live, grow and persevere in the faith until the end. We must n nourish it with the word of God. We must beg the Lord to increase our faith 
It must be working through charity, abounding in hope and rooted in the faith in the church. And so I think it's just really important for us to always go to those sources in our faith, the Catholic church, and to ponder and think about it. You know, perseverance is a real gift from God. And Mickey brings up like sports and how athletes, you know, they have to persevere to the end. And we have to do that too, no matter what is thrown at us. So I want to bring Mickey back on, you know, both of us, as I have talked about on other podcasts before uh, that we've never been divorced. I mean, I've said that so many times on the other podcast, but that we are adult children of divorce. And I do think that even with being the adult child of divorce, there was also a certain perseverance that you have to be able to endure. Uh, Mickey, talk a little bit about that on your end, because I know, don't you agree that I think there is a certain perseverance in a divorce family when you see some of the things that have gone on and you just want to continue on in your faith journey and not give up? And actually, you do bring up some very good points, too. Um, as you mentioned about the fact that we're um, part of a divorce household. I think that if there's one thing that really stands out to me is that, you know, in the divorce household, you know, you don't have the dad present or the well, whatever the case is. And, you know, you're struggling a little bit and you're struggling in school or you're being dissed or whatever the being picked on or what have you and it's 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 um it never ends let's face it i think from my per like from my personal experience you know i didn't realize how close I, how close i was to this virtue and It was, it was an act of faith. I kind of, I see perseverance as an act of faith for many of us. And the more times that we persevere in faith, we realize that we grow closer to God. And Jesus sets the ultimate example when, even though he carried a very heavy cross, you know, from the courtyard to Golgotha, now Calvary, of course. He didn't, he didn't stop. He kept going. Yeah, the cross was heavy. He was brutally beaten by the soldiers and everything. But in the end, he persevered in faith because he knew that he was going to do the, you know, do the ultimate, the ultimate act of charity for all of us, especially those who have, who are in the state of mortal sin. I think for us, if we look at that example of Jesus, we can persevere too. And I think for a lot of us too, like, you know, we don't, I, I mean, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not Santa Claus that can look at what everybody's doing, but I know when someone went through a lot, especially as a child, I think we can recognize their heart yet. Their persevering faith is where they're going to get them this far. Yes, 100%. And I think we always have to bring up the fact that it's not just about us as a lone island, you know, we are part of community and we, our faith is something that we do in a communal way as Catholics, isn't it? It's the fact we go to mass with other people. The fact that we praise God and worship God together as a group. To well, come back on screen, Mickey, uh, I would like to just read a little bit more from the catechism on that whole notion of faith. So um, what I want to read here is from the catechism, and this one is from number 163. It says, it says that faith makes us taste in advance the light of the beatific vision of God on our journey here below. Then we shall see God face to face as he is. So faith is already the beginning of eternal life. I mean, there's a lot more to it than that. As I said, it's number 163. But I think the bottom line here is that you who are watching this, who are maybe in turmoil right now, maybe you are really upset about what's going on, is we always need to hold on to our faith. I think that's really step one of perseverance is just remembering that to hold on to it, not just for you, but for those who you love. And the, the way that that is achieved, and you might be thinking, well, how do I do that? How do I have perseverance? I think it's a combination of prayer, 
That's number one, prayer. And it's not just a matter of prayer only in and of itself. It's also in getting the right kind of help when you need it and where you can find it. Because to persevere when you're going through a challenging time, such as a family breakup, we need support, the support of others. So uh, I don't know whether that would be someone in your family, somebody that you trust. I do want to offer the fact that we as a foundation, we continue to offer those free services for you. So don't forget to reach out and make that free pastoral appointment. As I say on all the podcasts, you just need to go to nonatus.org to our, uh, our, our services drop down, And then there is one there that says a priestly consultation. I think that's a great way for you to get support. And it's a great way for you to be able to continue to persevere during those challenging times. Now, Mickey did, and I did a whole other series on 10 ways that you can heal when you are affected by divorce, whether you are that couple or even if you're the adult child. And one way is you might want to seek therapy too. You might want to try to find a good Christian therapist, Catholic therapist, or whoever that you can get that you trust. Uh, and I would say we have recommended therapists on our website under the outside resources page on the out, on the helpful resources page. So check it out. You know, you can't really do this alone 100%. And for you to be able to persevere, you do need to find that, that right help. And you do need to be able to know that you are loved, supported, cared for, and to get you to those next steps. Because when you're going through relationship issues, you know, you might not know right now, like, are you going to get back with your spouse? Maybe you want to. Maybe that's something you would like to do, but maybe your spouse isn't interested in trying. So there's always a balance there and in praying about what direction is this relationship going in? Because when we say perseverance, maybe the perseverance is for you to keep trying in that relationship with a spouse. You see my cat back there. <laughs> um, but maybe it is to move on. I don't know. I can't say, I don't know, you know, obviously whoever's listening to this podcast, they're all different people. You might have a different situation, but part of your perseverance is the fact that you are going to search your heart and see like, where is God leading me here? Is he leading me to try to work out this relationship? Or is he saying to me, is the Lord leading you to maybe make steps to finalize a divorce and an annulment? So let me bring Mickey back on um, I do think that this this is something for us to consider when we say perseverance to someone who's affected by divorce because they might need perseverance to try harder in a relationship. Maybe there are ways that they can work out a relationship with a spouse that is considering divorce or that they're considering it. And maybe it's kind, you know, maybe God is giving you the signs that things aren't going to change. Maybe that other person is just determined never to come back. So we don't know. Mickey, what's your take on all this? Well, and I think you bring up some excellent points too, by the way. Um, I think that, you know, first of all, we do like to see, you know, marriages work out. And unfortunately, that's not always the case where more than half wound up, you know, ending in divorce, particularly of that of in the Catholic, you know, Catholic church. As I'm very unfortunate, very alarming too, especially when couples they probably engage in, um, say, uh, cohabitation, you know, that kind of thing that happens before marriage, you know, before like, you know, basically, if we all remember, like, uh, first comes love, then marriage, and the baby carriage, but that's been shuffled recently thanks to our culture. But I think if there's one thing that I could say in regards to perseverance, like, we do like we do want to see marriages flourish. And there will be times like, you know, couples, they're going to have some problems, too. But I think if there's one thing that's set aside from those that are just going to throw in the towel right away is that they. Some way, somehow come to a compromise, you know, how they're going to do this, how they're going to do that. And let's face it. You know, you made a promise you'd be good to you. You'd be you'd be there for each other through the, the good and the bad. For better or for worse, as they say. And you make a promise, not just to each other, but to God that we will love each other all the days of your life till death do you part. And uh, and sadly, I feel like there's been an outside factor or an inside factor that has led to those divorces. And I really 
think that, you know, in order for us to reclaim that true love thing that that's been lost for so many years is that we really have to teach what marriage is all about. It's not just like, you know, loving your wife and everything, but also is to lead each other to heaven. And we really need to bring back that mentality now. Yes, I agree with you. Thank you for the catechesis there. I mean, even that comment about first comes love, then comes marriage, then comes the baby carriage. I mean, you're right. There is a certain mixing up right now in our culture of that. And so it's always good to bring that to the awareness of those who are watching this podcast, you know, and maybe, you know, we, we get people who are in all stages of traumas and trials and things like that. And I just want to you know, reaffirm what Mickey said, we need to hold on to our faith, you know, because uh, we're all on this pilgrimage toward heaven. And sometimes that involves being married and the vocation of marriage. And sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes, you know, even though you tried to do all the right things when you got married, when people, when there's a decree for nullity in a, in a marriage for the, an annulment, what it's trying to seek out is the fact is, was something missing when that marriage occurred? Was there some kind of an immaturity on either of those spouses' parts? I said this before in other podcasts, but we did a four-part series with Father Matthew Phelan, the vicar of the Mercedarian Religious Order, and Sean, Father Sean Bransfield of the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. It was a few years ago. It was back in 2018, so it was a while ago. But the information that we shared on that presentation is very valuable for anybody because it's timeless. So all you need to do is go to nanatsis.org under the For the Divorced page. And at the bottom of the page, you're going to see a link there that goes to our YouTube channel. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to Philly Nanatsis on YouTube um, and, and get that information there. Watch it because it's very thorough. We really went into a lot of detail, four-part video series that you can really learn a lot about, you know, what is an annulment? How can you get one? And what exactly do they take into consideration when the art, you know, when they are looking at all the facts and saying, is an annulment going to be granted? Is the Catholic church going to give you that decree of nullity? So I just want to bring that fact up. Now, Pope Francis also has a few other really good quotes. Mickey re read one of them. He says, today, let us ask ourselves whether we are afraid what God might ask of us and what he does ask, do we truly let God into your life and how can you answer him? So that's, I think, a big part of perseverance too, because we have to allow God into our lives. We have to put faith at the very front and center of everything that we do. You know, we all have that sort of wish list for our lives. Maybe your wish list was that you would get married, have kids, and just live happily ever after. And then things didn't happen that way. Maybe there was an addiction with your ex-spouse. Maybe your ex-spouse was uh, not being faithful to you. Maybe there was a lot of other issues, very severe financial issues or gambling issues. Who knows? It could have been a lot of different things. Uh, I want to bring Mickey on just to talk about that because Part of that perseverance is that acceptance, right? There's an acceptance to say, you know what? I did all I could. Unfortunately, the person that I was married to before had these flaws, or maybe I had these flaws. And where does somebody who's watching this, where do they go from here after they've made that acceptance that they need to persevere ahead, even if things don't look so good for the future? Well, and I feel like there needs to be a persevering prayer. In fact, St. Paul says in his letter to the Thessalonians to pray without season, persevere in faith. And I think that's been kind of like what we've been hinting at a little bit, you know, throughout this episode. And I always remember a priest when he used to tell me that there was always a smart aleck, that if he went to a school with someone that was a smart aleck and he asked a sister, uh, Sister John, like, well, because there are nuns that used to take uh, uh, saint male saint names, believe it or not. There were some orders that used to do that quite a bit. I don't think they do that anymore. They are a little more feminine now. So, <laughs> but anyway, there was one thing that um, there was like one, there was a, uh, like, he had a classmate that asked the question, Well, sister, how did the snail get on Noah's ark? The sister said, 
It persevered. I think what that point is being made is that we can persevere too, especially when things don't go our way, you know, when everything's stacked against us. And honestly, you know, look at marriages today. You know, some say that it's this, but majority of times is the finances. You know, they move in together, they get this, they get that before marriage. And that's why a lot of couples are, you know, that's why, you know, 80% of married, you know, Catholics that are discerning marriage, you know, they move in before they're married together. And it's very unfortunate, which is why a lot of divorces happen. But I think if there's one thing that we need to do is, first of all, we do need to seek counsel. Secondly, reach out to us. We're willing to help you. We have mercenary friars that are willing to listen to you. They're willing to help you. Because I think, you know, Pope Francis had a reason for coming to Philadelphia. And without his visit back in 2015, I don't think this foundation would ever exist at all. We wouldn't even have this podcast here. Because we do need to heal a broken culture. Right now, we're kind of like a field, we're kind of like a virtual field hospital. They're not just like mending to physical wounds, but I feel like, you know, some of the spiritual, even mental wounds that we're trying to mend, you know, help heal and mend for some of these people who have been, you know, beaten by. Yeah. Thanks for the reminders on that, because it's so true. I mean, I've said this story over and over again about how the Mercedarian Friars came to the United States, excuse me, how Pope Francis came to the United States in 2015 and how you know, the Mercedarian Friars were really kind of almost troubled about thinking about all those families that are in terrible trauma. I mean, even off the top of my head, aside from my work with the foundation, I can think of so many people that I know on a personal level, relatives and friends who have gone through such horrible and challenging times of their lives that has made it difficult for them to find the healing that they need. So we always want to remind all of you to connect with us. Um, now, I do want to read a couple more of those quotes that I was mentioning. Pope Francis says this, you know, one of those challenges that we all have is dealing with negative people, and that's a perseverance too. And he says that life is good, make it beautiful. The less you respond to negative people, the more peaceful your life becomes. Save only those memories which give you a twinkle in your eyes, not wrinkles on your face. And I think that's a good one because, you know, let's face it, you know, when you go through a a divorce and separation. Sometimes it's not um, as I, I could say as life challenging for some as others. Like some people go through divorces and separations and annulments, and it was difficult and challenging. But there's other people where it was like horrific, like absolutely horrific, all the whole process from the beginning to the end. And so the, the quote from Pope Francis just reminds us not to let those difficult people get us to a point of lowering, you know, lowering our mood and taking away our faith. He also says that, uh, the, the prayer of every day is Holy spirit. Make my heart open to the word of God, make my heart open to goodness, make my heart open to the beauty of God every day. Just remember part of that perseverance is also still being able to see the beauty of life and not giving up on yourself and on your family. You can still have a beautiful life even if you have been divorced or separated and an old, your life can still be beautiful. So I want to bring Mickey on as we end and see if he has final thoughts on that, because I do believe that no matter what challenges you have had, your life can still be beautiful. Yes. And I, I think part of the things that we've echoed throughout this episode is this, you know, if Jesus can persevere in faith, so can you. I think that is the greatest antidote to those that to given up. Perseverance reminds us that I'm not gonna give I'm not gonna give up. I'm gonna keep fighting until the fighting is done. You know, and we come from Philadelphia, which is where we filmed this, and I think one of the great examples examples of cinematic perseverance as we look at Rocky, you know, especially in the first movie where you have this, you know, 
this guy that gets a million to one shot. And he goes the distance with someone that is well, the world heavyweight champion, so to speak. Not once, but twice. I don't count the third time that, that they talk about in the third and the fourth movie. But the point being is Rocky, you know, he trains for this moment. And, you know, he was told like, to give up like uh, by the 14th round. But you know what? He went that he went that extra round. And I think for us, that's what we need to do. We got to go the extra round, you know, in our faith journey. No matter how hard things will get and how hard it's going to be. In the end, a persevering faith is going to make it the difference between winning and losing our faith. So well said, Mickey. Thank you so much for that analogy. You know, that that's a favorite of mine. And I think that's a good image for all of us. Don't give up. You know, I remember I ran up the art museum stairs this past summer and it was a blessing because it reminded me too that we need to persevere just like Rocky did, just like Jesus did, right? And so Mickey, thank you so much for joining us again for this episode. Thank you for having me in. And we will see all of you here next month for our 10 Virtues podcast for those who are affected by divorce and separation. Please don't forget to subscribe to the Philly Nonatus YouTube channel. And would you share this with a friend? That's the best way that you can help us is to share it out on social media. God bless and we'll see you next time. The St. The Raymond Onatus Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith was founded in 2015 by the Mercedarian Religious Order with a mission to make pastoral outreach to families in crisis. The friars came together after attending the World Meeting of Families in Philadelphia with hopes of creating a foundation which could help those families and individuals who have faced tough times and need to know that the church cares and is there to help. Since that time when we were founded, the foundation has helped hundreds of families by offering prayer, priestly consultations, podcasts and videos, and programs and events. Whether it is something to do with divorce or separation, trauma, job loss, loss of a loved one, relationship issues or other crisis, the foundation has seen lives transformed through the services we provide. Pope Francis has referred to our world as a field hospital, where there are a great deal of individuals and families who feel abandoned and they need the special outreach of those who truly care and wish to show the face of God to others. As a foundation, that is what we do every day, and we're grateful to people like you who help to make a difference for families in crisis. Please pray for us and for our mission would you consider a one-time or recurring gift? Please go to nonatus.org to donate. Thank you sincerely from all of us at the St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith.